Hi, Dragonflies. Welcome back to Dragonfly Spirit Studio. I'm Lynn Bauer. This is once again the mobile edition of Dragonfly Spirit Studio, so please be patient if there's some background noise or the lighting isn't quite as great as you're used to in my studio. I just have a small workspace, but that's going to be fine because this is another postcard paint-along. In this postcard paint-along, I'm going to show you a very simple way that you can create a nice, round, perfectly circular moon or sun, if you want to, in your paintings without having to do any masking, without having to have any drawing, just a very easy way to create a nice, round moon. And then after we put our moon in our sky, we will put in the silhouette of some trees and uh, that will allow me to show you some techniques you can use to suggest tree shapes and tree textures and several things in one little postcard that you can practice. So I hope you'll have fun with it and maybe learn some tricks that you can take into your larger paintings. So let's get started on our postcard paint along of a full moon above the forest. And for this, you'll need some sort of a circular object like a coin or um, a little bottle top or something like that that won't be bothered by getting wet. And a spray bottle that produces a fine mist. So this is different from the usual misting techniques where I'm often trying to get those little droplets. For this, I actually want to mist. And before we start misting or, or painting, the first thing I want to do is mix up some wash ahead of time because since this is going to be a nighttime sky, I want some strong color. So I want to get my colors started softening up. So I'm taking droplets of water with my brush and using my brush like an eyedropper to just deliver some water to each of the wells in my palette. Now I'm not actually going to use every single color. So if you are not going to use every single color, you don't have to activate every single color. But especially if you're working with a larger palette, you might want to put several drops into each of your wells. And you can see already some of this color is starting to soften on the surface, but depending on how dry your color is and what brand you use, it might take a few minutes for that surface color to soften up. I'm going to use my usual mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So the ultramarine blue, I want pretty strong color. So I'm trying to sweep off the color that's on the top. And I want the color in my mixing area to be just to the point where it's not sticky. So if it feels sticky, I need to add a little bit more water. If it's very pale yet, then I'll add more color without diluting it anymore until I get something that has just that consistency where it's no longer sticky. Then I'm going to bring out some of my burnt, oh, I actually, I guess this is burnt umber. Sorry, I misspoke bring out some of my burnt number. You can use either one for this. And normally um, I use these two to make a gray and I don't really want just a gray sky. I want a little bit of a bluish tone to it. So I'm going to add burnt umber to my ultramarine blue. And then I'm going to check the color and make sure that I've got kind of a a dark indigo. Now bear in mind if you're watching this at home, your monitor might not be calibrated like mine, so you might not be seeing the colors exactly as I'm seeing, but what I'm shooting for is something that's kind of like a dark denim color. Now you might think, okay, I've got an awful lot of wash out here, so I should be ready to go, but in fact that's not enough wash to cover this whole area, so I'm going to actually mix up some more you, you almost always wind up needing more than you thought you needed. And having to remix while you're in the middle of a wash is always a bit of a challenge. 
So I'm going to mix quite a lot. If you're doing a bigger painting, you might want to watch um, the lesson videos for the Watercolor Skies and Clouds Project 1, where I talk about how to mix large amounts of wash. But I'm just doing a postcard, so I think I have enough now. And it's dark enough. I don't need this to be a black, black sky. There'll be some light in the sky. So I'm going to take my spray bottle and lay my coin down wherever I want my moon to be. I think I'll have it over on this side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mist from far enough away that I'm not forcing water underneath, but pretty thoroughly wetting that area, and then I'll pick up my coin, which will leave a little dry circle. And now I'm going to begin adding color, and I'm going to just let the, the spray, the misted area, kind of pull that color in. It's hard to see what's wet and what's dry here but you'll be able to see at home a little better, I think. So I'm coming up towards the edge of my circle, but I'm not trying to paint right into it because I know that what will happen is the color will migrate and that will give me kind of a, a soft edge instead of a hard edge to my moon. Okay, and now I'm just going to work outward with my wash And see, I still didn't even have enough color mixed ahead of time, so I have to mix some more on the fly. And luckily, I've made that mistake many times, so I'm a little faster at mixing on the fly than I used to be. <laughs> so if you make that mistake, just tell yourself, okay, well, I'm giving myself an opportunity to learn to mix color quickly. And now I'm just going to come all the way down the page with this color. There we go. Now we have to let that dry before we can do the next layer. Okay, we're back and our wash is dry for our moon. So we're going to add the silhouette of some treetops here. And in the process of doing that, I thought I'd show you a couple of different techniques for suggesting different kinds of trees. So I have here a piece of um, saran wrap or banding film cling wrap and this as you can see has been used repeatedly you can use this over and over again and what I'm going to do is just crumple it up and use it like sponge a sponge would be used so I know probably a lot of you have seen this sponging technique for creating trees and the reason I like this technique is because it makes shapes that are a little bit pointier and to me helps suggest leaves a little better. And also, unlike a sponge where you get the same pattern repeatedly, every time I refold this, I get different shapes. So it helps me create more irregular shapes, not things that are quite so regular as a sponge. Now right here, I'm fairly wet, so it's not that open. If you blot it so it's a little drier, you can get more of an open look. So we can have maybe a deciduous tree here. Oh, that was really wet. A deciduous tree here with some openness to it. I'll test it on another piece of paper. That would be smart, wouldn't it? And now we'll come down here into the lower part of the tree. And then maybe over here, I have another tree that's a little more distant. Okay. 
I'm only worrying about the upper edge at the moment. What's going to happen down here, I'm not really worried about yet. All right, now I'm going to create sort of a some kind of evergreen tree right in here. So let's mix again some more of that strong. I'm just making a dark blue gray because this is really just about the silhouette. Now, one way you can do this is simply to hold your brush mostly vertically and just kind of let it scribble to make the shape of a evergreen tree. And as you get farther down, press your brush down, make your scribbles a little fatter. And what happens down here is pretty much all of this winds up going into the darkness together. So as long as I've got the top, I won't worry too much about the bottom. I'm gonna come back in the bottom and just kind of stamp all of that as general vegetation. So that's one way that you can do sort of a evergreen tree. Another way you can do it is if you have a rigger, holding your rigger way out at the end, like, oh, can I get this where you can see it? Holding it like this and just sort of makes it even easier to scribble because since you're holding it way out at the end, you don't have a lot of control and you that's exactly what you want. You don't want to have a lot of control over this. You want to just sort of let your hand wiggle around because then you get these irregular shapes that are more like real trees than what we paint when we think we know what a tree looks like. So there's another way to do it. And a third way, if you if you feel like you don't like that very much, you can mist with your little spray bottle. This one, let's see if I can mist a little bit and then do it. And the color will crawl and you'll get a softer look. So I wouldn't do all of these in the same painting like I am right now, unless you um, had a little bit more space because these don't really seem like they go together. But um, just as a way of showing you several different methods, I'm gonna go ahead and have them all in the same painting. And then to make my branches in my deciduous tree, I'm going to put my rigger down and flick my wrist like that. Put it down, wiggle it a little bit, and flick your wrist to make that straight branch. Maybe we even have a, a bit of a dead snag that comes up here, or a tree that doesn't yet have all its, have its leaves yet. So I put it down and I flick. And then down towards the bottom, you can either take your um, plastic wrap or a sponge and fill that in, or you can just do a little bit of dry brushing, scribble it. Because down here, you just want to give an impression of mostly the foliage has filled things in but there's a little light peeking through. So if I just sort of scribble with my brush, that's another way to kind of fill in the foliage down at the bottom. As you get lower in the forest, less of the light is shining through. So I want to fill in most of this, but I want to do it in a kind of an irregular way. So that's one way to do it. Or you can get your saran wrap back out and, or a sponge and stamp 
think I'll bring this up this way a little bit. Now I know there's some reflection on this still, so it doesn't look like much yet. So let's let it dry and then we'll come back and see if there's anything else that we want to do to it. Okay, now that it's dry, we can see where we have areas of darker color and where things are lighter and softer. And we can think about how we might want to make adjustments to that. So I'd like to see a little bit more little darker values down here where it's low. So I think I'm going to do something with my saran wrap again, but this time what I'm going to do is spread it out flat, paint on it with my brush and kind of spread the color around and then lay that down and press. I think I'll do that again over here. So I'm building up a little bit of value, but this time just sort of an all over pattern. I know that that's really dark and you probably can't see much about it. So let me do that once for you here on this space so you can see on the video what that looks like. So I've got this fairly dark color that I've mixed up. I put it on my saran wrap and I get that kind of open pattern and then I lay it down and press. So that gives me kind of this open work and I'm just adding some value down here, adding a little bit of darker color down there all over with that pattern. I can also do just a little bit in one place if I want to, to add a little bit more in certain spots. So what I'm doing right now is just looking for places that looked unnaturally light, like there was um, not enough shadowing, and I added a little bit of varied color using my banding film or saran wrap or cling wrap. You can use any kind of plastic for this. Um, a good option is a piece of plastic grocery bag. That works pretty well. So if you don't have saran wrap, you can try other types of plastic. Now up here where we did the spray before we put in the evergreen, that's pretty soft compared to the rest. It might be fine if I had done them all that way, give me a very mysterious look, but it's too soft for this. So I'm going to use that, an use that as an opportunity to show you one more thing that you can do. If you happen to have a dip pen, um, and this is just, I have one of those covers for paint brushes and I keep it on here so I don't stab things with the point of this in my travel kit. So this is just an ordinary dip pen that you dip into ink, but you don't have to dip it. What you can do instead is load your brush with color and use that to load the dip pen. And then I can draw with the dip pen. What I'm going to do with my dip pen is just do a little bit of scribbling to give myself a little more definition in that real soft area. So I'm doing almost the same thing I did with the brush over here, kind of just letting my hand scribble along that shape. It's quite dark, so no one really is going to see this, but if I were doing it on white paper, it would look like this. So this is another thing that you could do if you wanted to for creating branches. So over here in my tree, if I wanted some branches up here, same motion I made with my brush where I scribble and then flick my wrist, but a little bit smaller, finer line using the dip pen. Let's do that on the, so I could use it like this to make branches.
This is a great opportunity to practice this kind of technique because I'm doing this silhouette here. So this is dark on dark. And what you get in the end is an overall impression. So if you make a boo-boo, no one will really notice your boo-boo. It'll be just fine. I think I'll do a little of that right here. There's a little bit of extra light showing through right in here. I want some color in there. And that's all there is to it. So let's let that dry a minute and I'll show you what it looks like when it's dry. I know there's some reflections on it right now. And we'll pull the tape off and have a look and see what we think. Okay, so I was pulling the tape off and I thought maybe I should actually talk about how to remove the tape in case any of you have run into this problem where you find that the paper tears when you try to take the tape off. And that's a lar largely a function of the tape that you're using, but it's so hard to know. Some of them um, change over time as they age, so even if you buy the same brand, it might be more or less sticky. So here's the way to do it. Pull the tape off at an angle. So it's kind of a, making a 45 degree angle down here where I'm pulling it off. And I'm kind of pulling away, not up this way. So that helps to bring it off gently. If you find it's still tearing, the solution is to warm up the tape. If you warm up the tape with a hairdryer, it will soften the adhesive. And even if it's really, really stuck on there, warming up that tape with a hairdryer will allow you to pull it off without tearing. But usually pulling at this angle will do the job too. So there we go, we've got it off. Now that was very simple, and I did this in a very sloppy way, but it makes a really nice little simple postcard. So this is a great way to mess around with techniques for how you might do trees. I didn't have to think about color at all while I was doing this, it's a monochrome painting, so everything is this sort of blue-gray. That means I don't have to worry about trying to mix color to get my colors right for my trees. I can worry just about the technique that I'm using to create that tree texture. And I can sort of explore a bunch of different ones. And if it doesn't turn out perfect, it's just a postcard. But in fact, even though it's not particularly perfect, it's nice as a postcard. And if you write a little note on the back and drop it in the mail to someone, I guarantee you they'll be delighted to get your postcard. So here's a great way for you to practice a new technique like this um, or other techniques that you have for creating textures where it's just a silhouette and you don't have to worry about a lot of complications. I'm not trying to paint any particular forest, so however that turns out is fine. I don't have to mask the moon. It basically handles itself. Let me see if I can get that up close so that you can see how that edge works. It gives you a nice soft glow at the edge. And all I had to do was lay that coin down and spray around it and the color migrates into the wet area. So there you have it, a little full moon over the forest postcard. I hope you have fun with it. And I'll see you next time. Happy painting.